uh, for Nietzsche, and I think I think it's a very important idea, is we need to recognize that the attempt to posit this absolute all perfect state of affairs is the act of debasing. It is the act of delimiting, denying the sense of differentiation. Right? There, there isn't, there isn't rank, uh, and that's problematic. In a secular setting, it becomes problematic for a number of reasons. I'm not saying that I'm not open to the discussion of how we might be able to get around it, but the way that these systems are constructed now, it's about who has the most, who has the most of X, whatever that X might be, and the possession of that thing, the attainment of this thing, is a system in which we can sort of differentiate. In academia, it's knowledge and intelligence, accessibility. In finance, it's money. In government and politics, it's power, it's influence, um, it's know-how for other industries and so on. So, number four, uh, last part of section 10.1. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Number three, um, quote, this is a quote from, from Nietzsche, and this is, a, this is obviously an important quote. The more our desire for a thing grows, right, the more desire we have for the thing, the more value we attribute, right, we ascribe to that thing. So that we recognize that insofar as we're talking about desire, right, we're, we desire something which isn't yet here. Right? Here is existence. Here is what ought to be the case. And this is, what, this is the, the focal point for my desire. So the more our desire for a thing grows, the more value we ascribe to that thing. Now, I've cross-referenced this note, note um, 336, with note 170.2. The concept of eternal life, the antithesis to transient personal life as personal immortality. This is one of the challenges that Nietzsche posed to believers in the Christian community. And obviously, Nietzsche lays the war axe on all things Christianity, which is precisely why, back then, many, 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 many hours ago, I gave... Um, Christians, the opportunity to respond to Nietzsche, no one took me up on it, but the idea is, well, your desire is for personal immortality. Right? You want personal immortality. Right? So, again, the more our, from the very beginning of uh, note three, or uh, point three, the more our desire for a thing grows, the more value we ascribe to that thing. So we recognize that we, we really have this huge desire for personal immortality. So that means as our desire grows, right, he says, the more we desire, the more our desire for a thing grows, the more value so that as our desire increases, As our desire increases, our the value we attribute to that thing increases. So think about, <laughs> I mean, I've read enough Joseph Campbell to know this and be able to back this up. Think about every social narrative ever constructed. What's, what's the ultimate thing to desire? What is ultimate desire for the mass? Immortality. I want to live forever. All the great religious traditions, all the great mythical, mystic traditions, all the great esoteric traditions, all the great stories, vampires and, and uh, gods and divination, it's all about living forever. Right? Think about how much desire we as a global society put on the notion of personal immortality my own eternal existence. I want to keep turning those pages infinitely, forever. The story will never end. My story will never end. Right? Nietzsche says that, well, because that desire is so high, the value we attribute to, to that thing, that state of affairs, is equally as high. Then after uh, note 339, um, still on note 3, or bullet point 3, Quote, the salvation of the immortal soul 
extremist form of personalization. For every soul, there was only one perfecting, only one ideal, only one way to redemption. For every soul, this is a pretty huge critique of Christianity, right? For every soul, for every soul, there is only one perfecting, only one ideal, right? So the idea is, you want it so bad. You want personal immortality so bad. And I would have loved to have heard someone from the religious community critique this and say, no, Nietzsche didn't really get it right, right? But um, it didn't happen, and I, I, if I get any responses, I can't incorporate it into the lecture series. But the, the critique from Nietzsche is, you want that thing so bad. You personally want personal immortality so bad. An institution recognizes, this is from a secularist standpoint, right? An institution recognizes how badly the masses want that. They create this discourse on how that is attained, but the only way to attain that thing is, one, to attribute a huge amount of value in the institution so that all of your value, all of your effort, everything that you care for is placed, is given to the institution so that the institution can then give you the thing that you want the most, which is that personal immortality, right? And what Nietzsche says is, very simple question, I mean, it's, it's, it's a powerfully dangerous question, which is why I know people don't like Nietzsche. In fairness to Nietzsche, though, you should challenge yourself, right? If you're a believer, I mean, what type of believer are you? Whatever the religious beliefs you have, what type of believer are you if you don't challenge yourself, right? If you just blindly accept, right? Nietzsche is just saying, simply saying, well, what if the institution lied to you? Have you thought of that? Have you thought that it could be possible? You know, it could be possible. Sure, it could be possible that I've been lied to, that this, this story really does end at a specific point. And my body's just going to be a corpse among any other corpse. Um, that is possible. But I still believe. But I still have faith. Okay, well, dude, I can talk to that guy. Right? We can sit down and talk. You can talk to me about your religious beliefs. I can talk to you about Nietzsche. We can have a discussion because I at least recognize that you've contemplated it. Right? What if it's the case that none of this is true? I'm not telling you to get rid of your faith. If you want to keep your faith, keep your faith. As I said in my videos, I have belief in what people would say are or are mutually exclusive belief systems, right? Because you know, I've you know, I have a better understanding of, especially monotheism, right? The the relationship between um, Islam and Christianity and Judaism is is grounded. It's it's Abrahamic. I mean, to be technical, and I'm not going to go off onto that. Right? So this idea that it's so, you know, it's so I could never believe what they believe. They're heathens, or I could never believe what they believe. Is a lot of that is. A lot of that is grandstanding. But the idea is, if you, according to Nietzsche, put value, put desire rather, in something, and you invest a lot of your desire, a lot of your care, a lot of your effort, a lot into this thing, then you also need to recognize that the value that you put on that thing increases exponentially. As my desire increases, the value I attribute to that thing increases. If I really, 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 really want money, and that's the thing that I really, 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 really desire, then I am going to value money. I'm really going to have a value sense of money. It's not the fact that I... Some of the, some of the richest people that I know, and I don't know people who have money like Warren Buffett money, but I know people who have quite a bit of money. The people that I know that have money, they're the cheapest people I've ever... They, they wear the cheapest clothes, they drive... They have nice cars, but relatively, with respect to the money that they have, they're not riding around in Maybox, you know? Um, I don't know people who have that much money, but they value money. They, it's not just about spending money because they, they recognize value of money. Me, I can only talk about my personal experience. I, it's obvious what I, what I desire, knowledge. I also recognize that there is no end game for my desire. I will, I will never satisfy my quest for more knowledge. I'm learning. I literally, when they say the old cliche adage like, oh, um, you learn something new every day, I learn multiple things new every day. And with the advent of the internet, which is the greatest invention ever, you can learn 
You can learn infinitely many things a day. A 